Oh dear. I've, uh, I'm suffering from something that I've had repeatedly during this build. And that's doing things because it would be cool or a bit retro rather than what is practical and will work. Right, I'm just mocking this up. So if you haven't guessed already, I'm going to use the white uh, bonnet because it's in really good nick and fits very well. But it didn't have that centre rib. And that red bonnet was, I decided was just utter garbage. So I've hacked off the centre rib, trimmed it, worked out where it needs to be. And now I'm going to have a go at bonding it into place. Just use some P40, then I can get jiggy with some body filler. There we go, it's on. So I've just given it a bit of a quick sand down. And now I'm just gonna give it a coat of body filler. I wasn't sure if that was gonna work or not. I'm actually quite pleased. Okay, check this out. So I've got some of this box section um, and I've sliced it in half, made these really right angles. Uh, and these tubes, I managed to find them in my little scrap bin. And the idea of these are I'm making brackets to hold the bonnet pins on. You know the braces, the diagonal braces in the engine bay that go like that? That are basically gonna bolt in there. I haven't checked clearance with the windscreen wiper motor yet. But once I've tacked that in place and done some stuff I will mock it all up before I commit and that is me prototype for that job So the plan is to weld that onto there. I was contemplating doing something like that because then I could just weld along there. I thought that would be quite nice and easy. I'm going for the symmetrical sort of look. It just means it'll end up where I want it to be. Let's see if I can weld it without it moving. So I'm just trying to work out where I'm going to put the bonnet latches. I know these aren't very period, but they work particularly well. These bits of masking tape are just cross-referenced where the pin is with the bonnet off. I lined it all up, did a cross-reference, so I know where it belongs. Uh, this using a pair of like school compasses, I run along so I know that's parallel. And I am think it's going to go a bit like that. I know I could put a, a sharp pin in its place, you know, mark the bottom of the bonnet and cut the hole. Um, there are lots of ways of doing it, but I just wanted to mock it up just to see what it looked like first. Um, and say, it's not very 60s. I'm going to have the springs on the front because that is definitely Mark II stuff. I'm really pleased with the centre rib. Job I don't need to get to my camera bag, isn't it? Okay, so issue. It turns out that that with the bracket that I fabricated, I'm actually four centimeters. No, sorry, three centimeters too low. I could definitely hack the bracket up to make it, you know, go higher, so that this bit is effectively shorter. 
or I can fabricate myself a new set of brackets. Hmm. Moments later. There you go, there's Mark two. I'm happy I did that rather than bodge the old one. Now I just need to sort the front out. Right, so my next task, or my next two tasks, is to somehow fit that lip, because it doesn't have one, uh, because it's a Mark I bonnet. So I think I've got three options. I've got a heritage doodah thing, which, I could probably quite easily bond, screw, nut and bolt, whatever that, onto there. I have got the lip that I hacked off the front of the other bonnet, but I can see already that, I can see exactly why it was crap, because it doesn't fit. The other option is I could just make some little tabs that pop out and fit onto these little oil holes. Um, don't know yet. The next job, quite exciting is to fit the bonnet badge now it took me a while to find one of these there you go look i uh this i managed to get brand new off to internet and this i bought with a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> i was just looking on ebay and uh looking up badge car badges and there was some chevette ones and bedford ones and all sorts of stuff and i was like ford stuff i was like oh yeah and then i saw this and i went oh my goodness that is a mark ii morris doodah bonnet badge which is quite um i don't want to say they're rare they're not very easy to get hold of and that kind of lives somewhere there so the next job is to figure out exactly where that goes drill with three holes and fix that in place I've chuffed the bits when I've got that. Right, so I don't really know what I'm going to do yet, so but I'm sure you'll find out very soon. Well, I was just looking at the two different types of I've got this one is obviously a bit bashed around so I went and grabbed the other one I've got and then I realized that when this was originally on the mark 2 this one when it had a glass fiber front I made up this little I don't know what that's made of stainless I think little bracket on the inside and put a riv nut in there on each end because it obviously where it was a one piece it didn't have a bonnet you know it was all in one um, so what I did I just basically drilled through and uh, nutted it through and I reckon I've just 
worked out roughly where it needs to be, put a little sharpie mark where I want the top. And I reckon that height is probably just about right. God, that'll make life so much easier. If it works, of course. And even if it doesn't look 100%, I don't care. Because it's a rally mini. <laughs> so, the bonnet. I've got um, aero catches, which you know I'm happy with that's kind of what I wanted to go for I don't actually like bonnet pins um, they are cheap China ones so I might have to replace them with genuine ones later uh, but of course I was going to go for the bonnet springs like you'd start find on the um, Brightax racing mark twos you know I thought stay with the mark two look however once fitted I realized that it was almost impossible to get the front bonnet off because of the trim and so i've messed around there's a little wooden block there look to try and bring it back out and i've bent it slightly and there you go it kind of it works but even then it's it's a real pain in the bum when you want to take the bonnet off so i'm going for something slightly different i've decided to ditch it all and uh, go for the the big rubber hook idea it's much less hassle it means that it'll be out the way nobody needs to know the sequence for fitting the boot which is a stupid idea isn't it so sorry nobody needs to know the sequence yeah because with these springs and those clips there was like a sequence you had to follow to remove and fit the bonnet you have to pop the clips open pop these open lift up the back quite high and kind of slide it so that this chrome trim went underneath the springs and the same thing when you put the bonnet back on you had to sort of do 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 that and then depth no this is a rally car we can't be doing with that so i'm going to take those off and i'm going to fit just rubber hooks on the front so the next job is to fit the badge. I'm really looking forward to fitting that, but notice that it's not round. There you go. Look. Well, it is round that way when you look at it, but it's got an amazing contour to it. It's sort of thin at the sides, fat at the bottom, and there's actually, if you guys see that, there's a notch out of the top, and that notch just goes at the end of the, what I like to call the nose or the bonnet dong, whatever you want to call it. And I was looking on my phone, surprising how high that badge goes. That's a Mark II look, exactly what I've got. Because I was going to actually fit it a little bit lower. I've got another photo actually. Just to make sure that this is my old Mark II. Oh, I absolutely love that. Don't know if you can see it, but yeah, again, that badge is quite high, much higher than I thought it would be. I was all ready to sort of whack it about there. But no, it needs to be about there. happy with that right I've got another set of these in the post because I don't have a matching pair so I'm not going to paint the bonnet just yet uh, until I can sort that out let's find something else to do <laughs> <laughs> 